This is a fan-generated show. If you'd like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new Rumble channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, Hunter Biden, crack, lies, and videotape. With us this evening, Jeff Cruer, the author of America's Last Chance. Jeff, welcome to the program. Hey, Jamie. Thanks for having me. Fantastic, Jeff. So tonight we're going to talk about a very, uh, I don't know what word to use. Maybe we can begin with surreal, very surreal topic. Now, Benny Johnson on Twitter introduced this video as the most devastating video on the internet. And uh, we used that title and gave him credit at Front Page Magazine. So anybody that has not watched it, it's the most devastating video on the internet. Just Google that and put in Hunter Biden, crack, Joe Biden, and uh, you will find it. So what we basically had in this video is a side-by-side. We had Joe Biden and Hunter Biden side-by-side. And Biden's talking really tough about his anti-crime bill in the past. Or maybe it wasn't his anti-crime bill, but he made his anti-crack crime bill speech talking about the tough laws and penalties in terms of crack dealers and smokers. And while he's talking tough, they have Hunter Biden smoking crack at the same time. Just bizarre. Jeff, you uh, follow all these things very closely in terms of Hunter Biden, the corruption. Uh, right. what, what did you make of this video? Well, I, I, I found it to be fascinating uh, because, you know, Joe Biden, back in his Senate career, uh, tried to portray himself as tough on crime. Mm. He had the, uh, the crime bill. Uh, he was uh, crowing about how he would uh, work with uh, Republicans and and get tough on criminals. And, you know, only later did uh, he try to backtrack from the uh, crime bill because it, you know, threw a lot of people uh, into prison and a lot of African Americans uh, viewed it as being uh, racist. But back then he was Mr. Tough on crime and uh, crack. And, and then of course uh, the video showed Hunter Biden smoking crack. And uh, those videos were all over the uh, laptop, uh, Jamie, uh, all kinds of videos of Hunter smoking crack. He was a crackhead for years. Uh, in fact, I'll never forget the story about Hunter Biden turning in a rental car with a crack pipe and uh, other drug paraphernalia, and nothing ever happened to him. I mean, Hunter can pretty much do whatever Hunter wants to do, Jamie. Jeff, you wrote an article recently for Town Hall and uh, with the title, Hunter Biden is laughing all the way to the bank. And, it's, and it very much is part of this whole theme. This is so disheartening, Jeff, because you know we're gonna explore this further, but we know that if it was Donald Trump Jr. or, or one of Trump's kids, I mean, there would be pre-dawn raids by the FBI. Don Lemon would just be in a rage on TV with moral indignation and Chris Cuomo and Rachel Maddow and The View, uh, you know, and, but they're, they're all completely silent. The media is silent. The intelligence agencies don't do anything. Law enforcement doesn't do anything. So Jeff, it's, it's depressing because the cabal, the deep state, whatever you want to call it, but let's just call it the left. They have infiltrated for years and decades, our government, our intelligence agencies, and they're in control, right? Oh, they, they control the media, they control big tech, they control the government, uh, they control Hollywood, uh, they control corporations. Uh, they have all the levers of power, uh, Jamie. And I'm and- glad you brought that up about Donald Trump Jr. I mm-hmm. mean, they would have thrown him under the jail. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. and the Trump kids lost money while their dad was president. Not only did they not cash in, but they took a big financial hit. Now, of course, Hunter uh, has been cashing in for years. And 
obviously he can do anything he wants to do. I mean, he can be a consultant for Burisma, even though he does not know anything about the company, the industry, the language, uh, the country, and get $83,000 a month. I mean, Jamie, this guy is a, a scam artist uh, extraordinaire. He really is. Well, he's a great scam artist. And so you have to be pretty intelligent to be a good scam artist. Is that what Joe Biden meant when he said that his son is quote unquote, the smartest man he knows in the sense of how you can be a crackhead and yet get away with everything and make lots of money? That's, that's a good point. I mean, he could get kicked out of the Navy for drugs. He can uh, lie on a, a background check for a firearm. I mean, he can uh, do what he wants to do as far as relationships, uh, deny a relationship with a stripper, and uh, only later having to admit that, yes, uh, that child was his child. Uh, and it's just on and on and on, his uh, personal behavior, his business uh, activities. And yeah, I guess you have to be relatively smart to get away with it, but it does help if your last name is Biden, Jamie, because there are a special set of rules for, for Bidens. Absolutely, but Jeff, when we think about the FBI or whoever it was, just the in law enforcement FBI, but that pre-dawn raid, with Roger Stone, I mean, the guy is like in his you know, 60s, 70s, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way about being older or old. I mean, I'm there, or getting there. I just mean, this man was not a threat to anybody in terms of need. I mean, a knock on the door would have sufficed in that situation, right? But they have like the SWAT, they have the SWAT and rifles and whatever, you know? So my point is, Roger Stone gets that, but I mean, Hunter Biden gets zero, right? Gets, uh, actually gets a pass. Mm. And uh, now I just saw Hunter Biden's uh, wife has Secret Service protection. Uh, they're in some kind of a super uh, deluxe rental in, in Malibu that they're paying uh, big money for. Uh, Full-time, 24-7 uh, Secret Service protection. Taxpayers are covering all these uh, bills for this guy. And uh, it's just amazing to me uh, that, um, you know, we're, we're wasting this kind of money on, on Hunter Biden, yeah. and, uh, someone who, who really should be in prison. I mean, he's, he's committed crimes. He's uh, someone that uh, gets a pass because of his last name. And uh, now this whole artwork thing is a joke, Jamie, is a total joke. Well, let's go through some of that. You. Uh are a scholar of these things, research very carefully. Your article was fascinating. So I wanna go through a couple of these points, but just this overall overall point that we're making, it's, it's just, it's surreal and disheartening and, and almost unbelievable, but it's true that the, the intelligence agencies are actually completely dishonest, politicized, and I mean, Giuliani said it himself, when they came for him, they took everything and they said, what's that? And he said, this is Hunter Biden's laptop. And they said, oh, we can't take that or something of that nature. Um, but I just think about it when it comes to anything to do with Hunter Biden, that members of the intelligence agencies know that they cannot touch him or Hillary or just, if you're on the left, you don't touch it. If you're on the right, you go for it. I mean, how do these people with consciences continue working for the intelligence agencies? That is a great question. You would think there would be an uprising from people yeah. that would say, hey, this is a double standard. This is not mm -hmm. American. Uh, mm -hmm. This is unfair. This is what you might see in a banana republic where political enemies would be targeted. But mm -hmm. it is going on, and, and I'm glad you brought up Hillary. She was protected, and Obama was protected, and all the people in, involved in Operation Crossfire Hurricane were protected, and nothing happened to any of those people. The Durham report never happened, uh, Jamie. We never got any kind of uh, prosecution, even though some conservative hosts were promising that we would. We got nothing, and nothing's going to happen to Hunter Biden. The FBI has had Hunter Biden's laptop 
since December 2019 and have done nothing with it. I've seen the contents of that laptop, at least some of the contents, and it is uh, very disturbing. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be illegal behavior on there. I'm not sure, yeah. but you would think the FBI would have plenty to investigate there. Yeah, well, you know, Anderson Cooper doesn't have time for that because you know, he's very busy, like even in the past with when Trump was in office, he, he really had to get Stormy Daniels on his show and, you know, really start asking about whether a condom was used with Trump. And, you know, he, he just had so much, so many responsibilities as an investigative reporter and journalist. But for some reason, Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon and Rachel Maddow are not interested in the following. So let's get to a few of the points you bring up in your article. And I have to say, um, I is, you know, maybe I can call myself a journalist, but I did not know some of these things. And they, it's just incredible. That's why we want to do this show, because many of our viewers are not going to know some of these details. And this is an outrage. It means that the media is not doing its job, not covering this. Thank God that people like you are. So let's begin, Jeff. Hunter Biden was kicked out of the U.S. Navy for cocaine use, correct? Correct. Give us a little bit of information on that. Well, yeah, he was a uh, public affairs officer, and uh, he had gotten really sort of a special deal just to even be admitted at his age. It was... Uh, uh, he was over 40, and uh, they worked out a deal because, again, his name is Biden, and I uh, got him into the Navy, and then it uh, turns out I had a source telling me uh, from inside uh, the Navy that uh, Hunter was uh, caught uh, using drugs, uh, and he was um, kicked out, and, of course, uh, they tried to keep it hush-hush, and, uh, you know, he didn't really... Uh, get the kind of uh, publicity that would have happened if it would have been, you know, a Trump child or something like that. So yeah, he, uh, he had special accommodations to get in the Navy. Uh, he didn't last long at all because they kicked him out for uh, drugs. He obviously has a terrible addiction because he uh, started um, having all kinds of different uh, events uh, that uh, involved drug use, like the time he returned the rental car with the crack pipe and all the paraphernalia. And I think if a normal person would do that, there would be some kind of prosecution. I mean, you can't just uh, leave drug paraphernalia in a car and uh, bring it back in, in, in terrible condition and then assume everything's going to be fine. But Okay, just a second. So, Jeff, okay, this smartest guy in the world, according to his father, um, okay, so he he leaves a crack pipe and other drug paraphernalia in a rental car. I guess he also left his lap, he just left his laptop at some, you know, you know, shop and left it there, but he's always leaving stuff somewhere. So he returned a rental car and left his crack or his crack pipe and some kind of, you know, drug paraphernalia inside the car, right? And, uh, and credit cards and uh, all kinds of other uh, cell phone, all kinds of other items. Now, if, if, if Donald Trump Jr. left crack or a crack pipe and drug paraphernalia in a rental car, there'd probably be a pre-dawn raid by the FBI. It would be all over the news. But if it's Hunter Biden, nothing happens, right? Right, because oh, nothing to see here, Jamie. Nothing to see here. Mm. Okay, so when you fill out a background check to get a firearm, I think in terms of the law, you're supposed to tell the truth. There's evidence to suggest that he lied on a background check for a firearm. And that is a felony. And that uh, would, would uh, presumably uh, be an offense that would be uh, prosecuted. But of course, nothing happened to him uh, after uh, he did that. So again, that's another thing he has gotten away with. And I don't think the average person could get away with that, uh, Jamie. <laughs> okay, so this is his background. And this guy, um, with what we just talked about, gets hired by this Ukrainian company, Burisma, for this massive co consulting contract. 
He has no training, doesn't know anything about the industry, doesn't know anything about the country or the language. Why, is, why did he get that job? Well, obviously because he was the vice president's son and uh, they figured that he would be very influential and that he, he would have the kind of connections that they wanted. So it was all about influence peddling. I mean, it's not about his credentials, not about anything that he brought to the table other than his last name. And of course, remember when Joe went to uh, the Ukraine, he demanded that the prosecutor who was investigating Hunter be fired or we weren't going to release a $1 billion loan guarantee to uh, Ukraine. So uh, Joe was all uh, excited that he got him to fire the prosecutor. And of course, the reason the prosecutor was fired because he was investigating Hunter Biden. Okay, now every time we're talking about something bad and strange, China keeps coming up. We've got the coronavirus, China comes up. Now we've got the genocide games in China, China all the time. And so when we look into Hunter's background, lots of dealings with China and a lot of question marks about his dealings with China, right? Correct. He, uh, he took Air Force Two to uh, China, uh, which of course I, I think could be an ethical violation. I don't know why he was on Air Force Two and I don't know why we were uh, flying him there so he could do business deals. And of course, um, you know, that's another shady deal that he was involved in with a financial services company there. So uh, add that to the list. Nothing ever happened, of course, uh, to Hunter on that issue as well. And, um, you know, then we just move on to, you know, the next scandal. And of course, the laptop comes out and, and then he claims, Jamie, that it could be Russian, that the Russians <laughs> could have planted it, uh, that maybe it's not even his laptop. <laughs> even though he's all over the laptop, his naked pictures are on there using drugs, engaging in activity <laughs> with what could be underage women, could be prostitutes, all of that on there. But he claims he's not even sure if it's not uh, maybe Russian uh, disinformation. <laughs> so. so so, Jeff, the FBI moved very quickly with Michael Flynn. You know, oh, that they just, they had a lot of time to go under, to go after Michael Flynn which I think we can agree was just scandalous. It was entrapment and many other things. Um, but the FBI has been in possession of Hunter's laptop, I think for like 19 months now, uh, if not more. So, and this laptop um, has some stuff on it that can raise some eyebrows to say the least scandalous images, emails, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is the FBI waiting for? If it was Donald Trump Jr., they'd probably finish their investigation within two weeks. Now we're entering almost two years. What's going on here? Well, it, it seems like uh, John Durham is on the case. Mm. Uh, the guy who, of course, was leading the Durham report that never went anywhere. Yeah, so whenever they're investigating the left, Nothing ever happens. The investigation drags on. It leads to nothing. Whenever they go after the right, conservatives, Republicans, Trump supporters, etc., it's lightning fast, lightning fast. And then of course, they throw the book at them and get super aggressive. So yeah, I don't know what they're waiting for. Obviously, uh, you'd have plenty of time to go through the laptop and figure out what's on there. But um, no, no word as to where that investigation is, Jamie. Well, they definitely had to take their time before and during the election. They definitely had, because they didn't want to politicize anything, you know. So, if I am correct, Hunter Biden is under tax investigation. I guess that'll take two decades. But there's a tax investigation, but it hasn't stopped Hunter from collecting huge payments in these other interesting careers that he has. So. He's in, you know, you document all of this in your article. So he's received a two million dollar advance payment from Simon and Schuster for his memoir, Beautiful Things. Uh, now, this book, which has sold very few copies, 
he describes his addictions and paints his dad as an absentee father, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, and our, our heart goes out to him. I think you've mentioned it as well. He experienced trauma uh, at an early age. He lost his mom you, uh, that died in a car accident. Our hearts go out for stuff like that. But he's making lots of money, to say the least, with that. Uh, now he's... <laughs> okay, so now he's an artist. What's going on there? He's an artist now. So he's uh, gone from business consultant financial advisor, author, and now he's an artist. And uh, according, <laughs> to, according to experts that have uh, viewed his artwork, uh, this is amateur art that uh, only family and friends would be interested in uh, buying. Uh, only uh, family and friends would pay more than a few bucks for it. Yet, <laughs> He is supposedly going to be uh, selling this artwork for $500,000. And uh, it is uh, obviously, in my opinion, influence peddling. This is a way for big donors to gain access to uh, Biden, to uh, help out the son, to do a favor for the son. And um, obviously, they think they're going to get rewarded in uh, some way for doing it. There's no other reason why any of these people would want to spend that kind of money on uh, an amateur and his artwork. Oh boy. Okay, so Jeff, now this other stuff here. Now look, at the Glazoff gang, we don't expect people to be saints, but we're talking about certain judgment calls and ethical behavior in terms of what we're, I'm about to mention. So he impregnated a stripper. Okay, so these things happen. Uh, maybe they fell in love or had a relationship. The Glazov gang is not going to prosecute an individual for that part. But he tried to deny the paternity of the baby. Now, this shows something about character. I'm also just asking a question. If Donald Trump Jr. denied the paternity of a baby, uh, I wonder if it would have been on CNN. Um, he had an affair, okay, maybe people have affairs, Glazov gang is not going to be the judge and jury or prosecutor on that, but with his deceased brother's widow, um, this says something about character, right? And there's a series of other women captured on video on his laptop from hell, so what are some of these ethical issues with that part of his life? Well, as you say, uh, you know, he tried to deny paternity. And mm -hmm. uh, then the, uh, the, the woman uh, was able to uh, go to court and confirm that he's a father. So uh, he's having to pay child support now for that kid. Uh, he's got, um, you know, numerous other relationships he's been in over the past few years, as you said, with his uh, deceased brother's uh, wife. Uh, now he is married again, and they have a um, young child, and, and his wife is now getting 24-7 uh, Secret Service protection, and, you know, they're living in uh, Malibu. And I know that uh, the laptop showed him with a variety of other women, uh, some of them very young. Some of them looks like they could have been prostitutes. I don't know. And uh, of course, that uh, was just blown off. I mean, uh, nothing ever happened to any of that. So he's got issues. He's got drug issues. He's got, obviously, promiscuity issues. Uh, he's someone who uh, likes to cash in on his uh, family name. He doesn't really have a stable um, career. He just floats from one thing to the next, cashing in, because he can do it. He can get away with it. And so far, it's working for him, uh, Jamie. Yeah. And the part that I want to stress again is, let's say the issue of quote-unquote promiscuity. For the Glazov gang, it's not necessarily that we, again, that on that issue, we're just going to become the morality police. The issue here is some of the ethical issues involved in that realm, but also the fact of the double standards of the media in this case. So, you know, Stormy Daniels just has to be on CNN for the uh, Anderson Cooper interview, 
but for some reason Anderson Cooper and the media are not going after some of the people that um, Hunter was involved with to, to interview them. And so, and so let's get into the double standards here in terms of bigger, more serious stuff on some issues. I'm, wait, I'm not sure what's bigger, more serious. I just mean what I'm about to mention here is very serious in terms of this, which you point out. There was a federal investigation into his suspicious business deals and tax filings, but it was delayed until after the presidential election. So according to Politico, the U.S. Attorney David Weiss, representing Biden's home state of Delaware, postponed issuing subpoenas and search warrants to keep the investigation quiet. What is that all about? Correct. Uh, to me, that smacks of favoritism. That smacks of uh, uh, political calculations to uh, help uh, the Biden campaign and to hurt the Trump campaign. Uh, obviously, if there would have been subpoenas issued, if there would have been uh, public knowledge of this, it would have been uh, harmful to the uh, Biden campaign, but they kept it quiet. And uh, that is pretty much, to me, uh, a prosecutor doing the bidding for Joe Biden, a, a Delaware prosecutor trying to help out a uh, Delaware uh, politician and uh, not pursue uh, this investigation vigorously of Hunter Biden. And of course, none of this consideration would have been done for the Trump campaign, uh, for the Trump family. Nobody ever said uh, with Donald Trump, but we're gonna hold off on all of this uh, because we don't wanna do uh, anything that could uh, negatively impact uh, the election. So again, it's just uh, such a double standard, uh, Jamie, it's sickening. And I think a it's, lot of us wonder what kind of system of justice mm. do we have in this country today? Yeah, very, very sickening, disturbing, very frightening uh, that there's been some kind of Bolshevik, Bolshevization of, uh, if, if that can be a word, uh, of, uh, of our intelligence agencies. I mean, Weiss is still the U.S. attorney serving in the Biden administration. He's still there, and there's other investigations going on. So we can just imagine what kind of influence he'll have, right? Right, and we can only imagine what's going to result from any of it, if, if anything does result from it. Because again, the Durham report uh, never resulted in anything. And that's supposedly still going on, and that's been going on literally for years. So the same thing could happen with uh, the Hunter investigation. So there's uh, no hope uh, that uh, I think uh, that we'll see a, a vigorous prosecution of uh, Hunter Biden. I just don't see it happening. Jeff, Joe Biden, as the evidence makes clear, definitely was aware of his son's activities on many yeah. levels. But he has denied any knowledge of Hunter's business dealings. So he has zero knowledge, according to him, zero knowledge of Hunter's business dealings. But there's discrepancies here. And, you know, Tony Bubalinski has, uh, has revealed some things. If Biden even knows 1% or 2% of his son's business dealings, then he is lying. Correct. And I think there's no doubt he is lying. And I believe Tony Bubalinski. I believe Peter Schweitzer, who's an investigative reporter who has uh, been digging into this. Uh, I believe uh, all the others who have uh, made the uh, connections there. And uh, it just doesn't make any sense that he wouldn't know what his uh, brother was doing, what his son was doing. Uh, the whole idea was to, to do all of this to connect these people with uh, Joe Biden. And then Bobolinsky said that um, they were cutting in the quote big guy for like 10% of the deal. So not only was he aware, but he got a piece of the action. And again, this whole investigation has gone nowhere. Uh, nothing ever resulted from it. And uh, just adds to the uh, corruption that we've seen with the Biden family. And this is, uh, this is nothing new. 
This is just an ongoing narrative. You point out, in terms of Obama, Fast and Furious scandal, IRS abuse of Tea Party organizations, uh, no justice there, nothing. Um, Hillary, in terms of her foundations, um, where do we start? Her foundations, questionable Russian donations, um, improper handling of top secret and classified emails, um, her destruction of evidence, zero ever done. So if you're on the left, uh, everything's fair game, right? Yeah, if you're on the left, uh, no worries. Do whatever you want to do. You get away with whatever you want to get away with. Uh, no repercussions. Uh, if you're a, a friend of Donald Trump, beware. You could have a, a pre-dawn raid. Uh, you could have uh, dozens of uh, FBI agents smashing down your door. You could have CNN cameras out there. Uh, it could be a whole different situation. You could get thrown in solitary confinement. Uh, and, you know, that's exactly what happened to Paul Manafort. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much a distinct difference between how the Trump uh, friends are uh, treated and how the Biden family is treated. Jeff, my family ran away from, uh, well, I don't know if the word is ran away, but we, we, uh, we, we got out of the Soviet Union when I was a kid. And uh, there's, that, there's that, that evil spirit, that virus of communism and of totalitarianism. And in our family, we can smell it. And um, the producer of this show, Annie Cyrus, who escaped the barbaric clutches of Sharia, she can sense with spider sense totalitarianism when it's close. And we feel very much something starting to go like this yeah. on, yes. a, on American territory. But I can feel it, and many of us can feel it, and you can feel it. What's going on, Jeff? This is, uh, is it Antichrist times? I mean, I just, it's, it's, it's a scary time. Well, when you lose faith in your government's agencies, when they become politicized, when they uh, become uh, unfair and targeting one uh, side of the political spectrum, uh, that's uh, a change in what our history has been in this country. That's not uh, the American tradition. Uh, we used to have confidence and faith in these uh, institutions. We don't any longer. So it is sort of like a banana republic. It is sort of like a corrupt uh, regime that we see uh, in communist nations, we see in dictatorships and tyrannies. So there is no faith that the American people have in these institutions, the FBI, the DOJ, uh, the NSA, the CIA. Uh, how can we possibly trust them? How can we possibly have any confidence in them? Uh, conservatives are being targeted. Uh, conservatives are being thrown in jail without due process. Liberals can uh, riot and loot and burn and nothing happens to them. So we, yeah, we, we are moving in a very dangerous direction, Jamie. Thank you very much, Jeff, for being such a noble and courageous truth teller in our world today. For those of our, for those of our viewers that are inspired by you, want to check out more of your work, want to follow you, where do they go? Thank you, Jamie. Uh, my website is my last name, crewair.net. And I have information there about my shows, my, my columns, my book, my videos. And I would love people to check it out and uh, get involved in uh, what we're doing. So it's crewair.net, Jamie. Thank you for everything you're doing. Stay strong and we hope to see you soon again on the Glasoff Gang. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Crewair, the title of that article that we base this show on, make sure you read it. Hunter Biden is laughing all the way to the bank. Just Google it. Hunter Biden is laughing all the way to the bank. Jeff Crewair at Town Hall. Uh, check out the article. And please remember, we've had enough of YouTube um, censorship. We are at Rumble now. So look up the Glasoff gang at Rumble and subscribe to us. And we will see you soon on the Glasoff gang. Good night. Go to MyPillow.com and use code GG21 to get incredible and amazing discounts. 
or just call 1-800-854-0673. That's right. MyPillow.com is waiting for you. Start living like a king. Start being, for once, the coolest version of you. And all the while, you'll be supporting a true American hero that's fighting a true American cause. God bless you, and God bless America. And God bless Mike Lindell and my pillow. <laughs>